Today I'm going to show you how to make these folded fabric pinecone ornaments. These are the ornaments that I did for the third annual YouTube ornament exchange. And what you're going to need for this project is fabric. I used a selection of five different fabrics and I used fat quarters. Uh, one fat quarter will give you two ornaments. Uh, you also need a rotary mat, a ruler, a rotary cutter, styrofoam eggs. They are two and five sixteenths inches by three and one sixteenth inches, I think. Uh, sequin pins, Elmer's glue, hot glue and a glue gun, uh, floral picks, ribbon, and small gold ornaments, which are not shown here. Now what you want to do is take your fat quarter and fold it in half so it is 9 inches by, I think it's 21 inches. Um, I don't have a full fat quarter here, so I'm not going to show you that. But what you want to do is cut along that perpendicular to the fold. So you have... Um, strips that are two inches wide. Um, one fat quarter will yield you nine strips that are two inches wide and for each ornament you will use five of those. Once you get your strips cut like these already are you want to gather them together and stack them just like that and I've got five layers of fabric here that I am now going to cut into two inch squares. And these do not have to be perfectly exact two inch squares by any means, you just want close enough. So I'm gonna go through and cut these into two inch squares. So I've got all of these cut now. I have two, seven, eight, and nine sets of five two inch squares for a total of 45 two inch squares. Now I've got all my fabric cut, I've got my sequin pins here, and I have just a little piece of cardboard here with uh, my Elmer's glue out on that. And I'm going to take my egg styrofoam thing, my styrofoam egg I guess you would call it, and you will see that there is a wide point and a pointed point, or pointed end. We're going to start at this pointed end here. And you're going to take one of your pieces of fabric, and if you hold the fabric over the styrofoam, you can feel with your thumb, if it'll focus, you can feel with your thumb where that exact point is. So just kind of hold it there. I'm going to take a sequin pen and dip it into the glue here, and I'm going to put a pin on each point kind of pulling this fabric a little tight. And for all the sequin pins that we use during this, they will be glued, because we don't want this coming out. And last point here. Just like that. And what this does is it covers the very end, so you cannot see the styrofoam. Now we're going to take another square, and we're going to start creating the little petals, if you will, of the pine cone. To do this, all you're going to do is open up your square and have the right or wrong side facing you. You're going to fold it in half into a triangle, like that, and then you're going to take these two, these two points right here and fold those together. So you're basically folding it into fourths. And what you're going to do is take this point, and down here at this point here, you're going to match those points up, hold it there, and put a sequin pin in each corner, just like that. I'm going to take another piece of fabric and fold it. And this one I'm going to put directly opposite. Like that. Hold those points down and put a pin in each one of those points. Now for the other two sides, again fold your square of fabric. Now I've got all four points on the bottom there. 
And you can see how that first fabric that we just, or that first piece of fabric we placed on the end of the ball, it covers that so you can't see any styrofoam in there. So for the second row, the first row is only going to be four points. The second row, we are going to put in eight points. And starting anywhere on here, you want to line up your points in this row with the point in the bottom row or the row just below it. And I found that overlapping wise, if you overlap this halfway here, so the very top of this point lines up with what would be the middle of this point right above it. And that will line it up enough so when you get to the top, you're not short pieces, you're not long pieces, and every once in a while you will get a pin that is not sharp like that one, and it hurts like a mofo trying to push that in. But I'm just going to go pin these corners, and when you do these and get another groove of it, they go relatively quick. This next one, try not to put your finger in the glue. This next one, line that one up again. Make sure it's at the halfway point for the point below it. So after you get these four points done, what you want to do is go through and put a point between each of these points. So just line that up with these two points. Make sure that those points are all in a straight row there. And pin. And keep doing that all the way around until you get the other three points done. And there's the last point of this row. And there you will see we have all eight points done of this row. Now for the third row, it will be the same as the second row. However, you're going to go back and start with the four points of the four points you did in the previous row. Now this one's a little easier to line up because this point here you pretty much want to be in line with this cross intersection right here and this one right here. But again, this top row should be the halfway point of this triangle right here. I know it's kind of hard to put into words and try to understand, but uh, once you get going on this, you'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of these points done and finish up all the rows until I get to the last row. All right, so I've gotten a total of five rows done now. Uh, again, the first row is only four points. Uh, rows 2, 3, 4, and 5 each have 8 points, and now it's time to do row 6, which will again have 8 points. I'm going to go ahead and get the 4 beginning points on here. Alright, there's the last of the 4 points on the last row. Um, and you can leave it like this, that's perfectly fine. However, there are still four squares left out of your original pile of 45. So I just use these to finish up the top there. I figure I don't want little pieces of scrap fabric laying around, so might as well put them in. Um, so again, you just lay them down so the point is halfway there. Um, however, on this last row, you don't want your pins to be real noticeable. So what you're going to do is, again, glue your pin there. You're going to put this pin about a quarter of an inch from the point there instead of right at the point, And you're going to put it right up against uh, the raw edge of the fabric. And what this does is it will help conceal those pins on this last round. And this right here is the very last point of my ornament. Put the glue out of the way, sequin pins out of the way. Then what I did is went around here and tried to pick off 
any loose strings that are here. And they come off relatively easily. Just make sure that you don't have any there. And now it's time to cover up this top. Now there's a couple different ways that you can cover the top of your ornament. Uh, you can just use a ribbon, you can use uh, an entire floral pick. I chose to add some greenery pieces around the top and all I did was took a wreath and cut off the tips there and then took those tips and cut them in half again. And all I'm going to do is take the end here and I'm going to shove it into the styrofoam right along that fabric line. And once I get it in, I'm just going to push it down. And I did, I think, four pieces along each fabric there for a total of, I don't know what that is, 15, well, that's number five. I'll let you know when I get done. And this is piece number 12. So for a total of 12 pieces there. And that is what it looks like when that's done. Now I'm gonna take a piece of ribbon. Uh, I chose green, you can use whatever color you want. I'm just gonna fold this in half and tie this into a knot, just like that. And then through the center here, up through the top, I'm just going to put a sequin pin in like that. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun here and put a dab of hot glue there because you do not want this coming out of the top of the ornament. And you can see right there where the molding mark is or whatever from the styrofoam egg. You want to put it right there at top. And you want to push this so the knot is kind of down inside the styrofoam and enough to let that glue set up. And then once it sets up for a minute, just kind of pull it up and make sure that it's in there securely. And for the ornament exchange ornaments, I used three small gold uh, plastic ornaments. Uh, right about now is when you would glue those in. However, I went back to Hobby Lobby and they were completely out of them. So I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to use the berries that I accented the balls with, um, which were these things right here. So all I did with the ornament exchange ornaments is, let's move you back here a little bit, is put the three balls on and then used these one little piece of berry, if you will, uh, in between each ball just to kind of fill that in. But like I said, since I don't have those balls, sorry for sounding inappropriate there, I'm just going to do the berries. So just put in a dab of hot glue and set in one of your little bunches. Let that dry for a second. And on some of these where you want them to lay down, you can go ahead and just glue directly onto the berries and don't be afraid of the glue because this glue also helps to hold the greenery stuff in and once you get done this is your completed folded pine cone folded fabric pine cone ornament so that's how i did those for the exchange this year i don't like this berry cluster at all so i'm just going to rip it off Okay, we'll fix that here in a minute. Anyway, there you go. That's how I made the ornaments for the exchange this year. I hope you guys enjoy, and thanks so much for watching.